Hi, and thanks for tuning in to Salesforce's Release Readiness Live for Summer 16. I'm Mike Torres, and it's great to be back discussing the Service Cloud's latest features and developments. Now, as a final point before I hand things over to the product team, we'll probably be touching on some of our product roadmap items today. So to properly set our expectations for that, let's review Salesforce's forward-looking statement slide. If you're not familiar with this slide, it urges Salesforce customers to make purchasing decisions based only on currently available functionality. Uh, Mike, if you remember last time when we were uh during the spring release readiness, we spoke about uh, work orders and how it was a very foundational uh, object for field service. Guess what? Two months later, we launched a whole new product uh, for field service. We're calling it Field Service Lightning. Uh, so today, I'd like to talk a little bit about that and then go into uh, our summer uh, capabilities. Let me just go back to the presentation. So, now, field service is not a new concept. It's been around for quite some time. In fact, uh, early... Last year, we surveyed a couple of uh, companies and found that most of them, almost 54% of them, were doing some kind of manual uh, methodologies for field service, essentially pen and paper. And the rest that uh, did have some kind of automation were using archaic legacy on-prem systems that was siloed and disconnected, and uh, it was just driving down employee productivity and raising costs. So we built Field Service Lightning on the Salesforce platform to give this connected experience to our customers. So uh, anybody in your organization, the sales rep, the uh, service agent, the dispatchers, the technicians are all on one platform and are able to share the capabilities that are now available. Uh, they're able to access relevant information, thereby giving them the 360-degree view that's essential for them to perform their job better. Uh, Field Service Lightning also has an intelligence scheduler that matches the uh, requirements of the job, right? The skills, the location, and the availability of the customer with uh, matching parameters on the technician side, their skills, their location, their availability to come up with an optimal schedule, thereby we are always providing the right technician for the right job at the right time. Also, um, field service is incomplete without a mobile component. Mobile, mobility is essential for success. Uh, so right now, we'll use the Salesforce S1 app to uh, we'll equip and empower the technicians to go do a better job. And you'll see me talk about the roadmap where we're working on a dedicated native uh, field service mobile app. Now, we'll see a lot of this in the demo, but I would like to highlight uh, two new capabilities that are new in summer. Uh, one is SLAs for work orders. Uh, this is very similar to cases that uh, all our customers are used to. So you, let's say, take an example where, let's say, you're an organization, a field service organization that offers a 24-hour guarantee. That is, any time a work order is logged, within 24 hours, you'd have somebody out there to resolve this issue. Now, you can model this as milestones and entitlement process and associate that entitlement to a work order thereby giving everybody in your organization, your service managers, your dispatchers, and even your call center agents, uh, a view into how much, how best you're tracking the SLAs and uh, they can then take corrective actions if uh, they're failing those SLAs. The next uh, big uh, capability that's coming in summer is around knowledge, knowledge for work orders. So, Again, just like cases, you're able to create uh, knowledge articles and associate them to work orders. This comes very handy when uh, you have technicians out in the field uh, fixing, fixing an asset, and they now have a very easy way to look up our articles, either videos, tech bulletins, just you know, guides on that particular asset. Instead of having to go to the internet and search for those, they now have this handy in their mobile app that they can look up and uh, kind of self-train. Uh, also have the slide on the dispatch console, but this is part of the product we launched, and we'll talk more about this in the demo, which is very soon. But before I jump into the demo, I'll also like to talk about the roadmap, again, under Safe Harbor. We have a very, very aggressive roadmap for the next year. Uh, I talked about the offline-capable mobile app, which is coming soon. Uh, we're also uh, going to target uh, adding the ability to model teams and crews so that you're not just sending one person to the uh, to the customer site, you're sending a crew. Potentially, you can also uh, schedule and model your trucks or cranes and other equipments that you want to model as a crew. 
Uh, we're also going to target uh, having the ability to model parts and inventory and track van stock. So we're not going to assign somebody that has low inventory in his uh, van. So uh, so this is this is a great uh, use case for first time fix rate, which is a very common metric that the industry tracks. So you don't want somebody going in and not finishing the job because they didn't have a part. So we'll make sure that we send the right person with the right parts to the job. Uh, we're also going to target preventative maintenance. So for instance, when you sell a product, you're also going to sell service contracts. Uh, we want to take that and model that out as work orders out in the future so that you can have all your preventative maintenance pre-scheduled and, and kind of uh, hit those milestone targets, if you may, for that kind of maintenance. Uh, also, we realize that field service is, is very different for every industry, and every company has its own process for a work order. So we want to have the ability to model those processes in the system and uh, drive some standardization within the organization, thereby you're, you're kind of making sure everybody is working out of the same process. But every company, every organization is going to be different. So let's see this uh, in action. Uh, for the demo today, I'm going to be uh, playing the role of three different uh, personas. Uh, one of the tech support agent, who will be using the service console. Another of the dispatcher, who will be using the dispatch console. And the third, a field technician, who will be using the S1 mobile app to make progress in the job. And for the demo, the scenario, uh, we have a company that specializes in the AV uh, repair, and uh, they have a customer who has a really huge LED panel, the kinds that you see in sporting stadiums. Uh, and one of the panels there has a blackout, and it's not a good, um, and they have a sp uh, sporting event coming up, and they want it fixed. Uh, this is an IoT device. It's a connected device, so it recognizes that there is an issue and automatically generates a case with Salesforce. And that's where the technician now comes in, or rather the uh, tech support agent comes in. So I'm going to be the tech support agent now. I log into Salesforce and make myself uh, available and online on Omni. And as soon as I make myself available, uh, the case about the LED panel blackout pops up. So I accept the case, and I'm taken straight into the case details page. And this is where the... Uh, power of the Salesforce platform starts to show. Uh, in the screen, on screen, I'm able to very clearly see what the account is, what their entitlement is, what is the asset that is in question and what needs to be done with it. Now, as an agent, I try my best to resolve this case, but realize that uh, I need to send a tech out to uh, determine the problem and fix it. For that, I create a work order. I'm gonna switch layouts and in order to speed up, this demo, I'm going to run a macro that is going to create this work order for us. Uh, now that the work order is created, let me drill down into the work order. Uh, here again, the, the, the 360 degree view of data continues. And in this screen, I can very clearly see, again, what the account is, what the asset in question is, what kind of uh, uh, entitlement is associated, and this is something new in uh, uh, summer, and we'll talk about it in just a little bit. Also, uh, I can see what the asset uh, that needs uh, some kind of uh, repair or replacement is. Now, to the right, we have two new components, and these are the two new capabilities in summer. Uh, at the bottom, we have the knowledge widget. Uh, like I mentioned, you're now able to very quickly look up knowledge articles. Uh, and here's uh, the uh, knowledge articles related to LED blackout are already pre-filled and, and uh, pre-searched. But you can change this term and look for other things. Uh, and you're now very easily able to associate a knowledge article, attach it to the work order. Let me switch views, and you, sh you should be able to see that in the feed layout as well. Now, what, what I've just done is by associating this knowledge article with the work order, uh, I am empowering the field technician to use this article in the field when he's using the mobile app. He doesn't have to go out to the internet and look for this, this particular article. Now, the second new feature is around SLAs uh, that's modeled through milestones, and this is the widget you see in the top right corner. 
Uh, and like I mentioned before, this is very similar to cases. And in this case, the, this AV uh, org uh, has a 24-hour guarantee to its customers. So anytime a work order is created within 24 hours, the guarantee is that a tech will be sent, dispatched, and work will be completed. So I've modeled this as milestones in an entitlement process that has this 24-hour countdown, and associated that entitlement, this is what you see here to the right, uh, to this work order. So now, everybody in, in my org, um, be it the service manager, be it the technician, or even myself as the tech support agent, can very clearly see uh, what's happening and uh, if action, required actions are taken on the work order, and if uh, any remedial action needs to be taken, uh, any one of us can do that. Uh, now, with the uh, let's say I have the customer on the phone with me, and uh, I want to be able to offer them uh, windows, time slots for an appointment where the technician can come and do the job. Again, remember, as a tech support agent, I do not have any uh, knowledge about the technicians in the organization. Uh, nor their skills or availability, or their locations for that matter. And this is where the power of the scheduling engine comes in. Uh, as a tech support agent with the customer on the call, phone with me, I'm very easily able to offer them uh, appointment windows, and I do that through this appointment booking uh, widget. Let me set the right parameters and I hit get appointments. So the Scheduling engine goes and churns through all the data available and comes up with some options for me that now I'm able to offer the customer. And in this case, I'm gonna choose the one to three slot, which is which works very well for the customer. Just select that and an appointment is now booked. I can go back to the uh, feed view and also see that an appointment for this particular work order is already created. Now with this, uh, my job as a tech support agent is complete and I'm gonna switch hats and become the dispatcher. For the dispatchers, I switch to the dispatch console. Now, as mentioned before, the dispatch console is my command center. I can get a lot of things done just through this one page. Uh, to his right, you have this nice Gantt chart, which shows all the technicians that I manage, and also shows all the work orders that have been created and color-coded based on the status. A green indicates that it has been done, complete. Uh, gold indicates that the tech is on site and is making progress. Uh, blue indicates that it has been dispatched, but the tech is still not on site. Uh, so for instance, this is the work order that we just created, and this is in a slightly yellow orange color, indicating that it has been assigned, but not yet dispatched to the technician. Remember, only when it work order dispatched, does a technician know that he has to do work on it? Let me also show you a little few other things. You can right click on this and look at the map, uh, which shows you where the location of this particular job. This truck indicates the job. It also shows uh, where the technicians are in this vicinity. So all of these green uh, humanoid figures are technicians. So this gives me more control uh, over scheduling and I can manually override anything and uh, make some determinations here. I'm not gonna make any changes now. Let me go back to the Gantt. Uh, now towards the left, you have a number of different uh, filter options. I can click on match Gantt and it'll show me only the work orders that are on the Gantt. I can uh, now change and show all services so that I get a bigger view, bigger list of all services that I want to work with. I can change the dates here. Uh, I can also change the locations or the territories that I manage so I get a much more broader view. Now let me go ahead and dispatch this job to the uh, technician so that now I can move to the next stage of the demo. All right, so this job has been dispatched. Now I'm gonna switch hats and become the uh, field technician now. For that, I bring up my simulator. I'm already logged in as a technician, and I can see a list of all the jobs that I have to perform today. Uh, let me also look up the number. It's 4212 for this particular uh, work order. And you can see that it's already available on my mobile app right now. And this is the S1 mobile app. Uh, I can click on this and drill down and get some more details. 
uh, once again, this 360 degree view uh, that the platform enables continues to the mobile app as well. As a technician, now I know what the account is, what type of work I'm doing, when I should be there, uh, at what stage this uh, work order is in. I also have access to chatter feed, so I can chatter back with the dispatcher and or anybody else out in the field, anybody in the team. So this is a great collaboration tool. Uh, switching to the related list, I get all information about the asset and the kind of things that I need to be knowing about this particular job. Now let's say I'm at the job site and uh, I can go ahead and change status to on-site. Notice what happens back here in the Gantt. Uh, almost in near real time, and I say near real time because it's the communication lag, uh, the color changes to uh, the gold, golden brown, uh, indicating to the back office personnel that I'm on site and making progress in the job. You do no longer have to pick up the phone, call them, and see if they are on site. Now, back to the mobile app. Uh, I've found what the issue is, and I've also fixed it, so I go back and change status to complete it and I get the option to also get a signature from, the, uh, tech, uh, from my customer, so I get their signature, and I'm done with this job, and I'm now going to go ahead and work on my next job. Notice what happened in the dispa dispatch console. This particular uh, work order changed to green, indicating that I, this is a job well done. Now with that, uh, you've seen an end-to-end uh, -end demo of uh, a complete break-fix scenario. I'd like to pause here and see if there, we had any questions. So we have people that are inspired by this. And is this something that they can, that they haven't purchased it yet, they're very interested in it. Is this something that they can go out and apply to a dev org? Or how do they get their hands on this to play around with it? So you'd have to, uh, they would have to uh, get in touch with their account executive who can then work with them to uh, understand their requirements and then uh, set them up with uh, the necessary accounts.